Right, g'day folks, I'm Paul, VK1 Alpha Tango Papa, if you're into that. And yeah, I wanted to show off Cubic SDR, which is a uh, C++ based um, receive only um, SDR platform. It's pretty cool. It's got binary releases even now, so you can download it. You don't have to compile it, because that is interesting sometimes. Um, yeah, it's on GitHub and it's fairly active. You know, three days ago is the latest commit. Um, there's stuff coming into it every week. There's new things happening. Um, it runs on the uh, SOAPY SDR libraries, which is a vendor neutral, platform neutral set of interfaces between you know, SDR hardware and a nice API. Uh, so uh, the, oh, the <coughs> excuse me, I'm not very well and my throat's quite sore. So talking's probably not something I should do too much. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you, you build your SOAP SDR libraries, then you build the modules for that library for your hardware. I've got a Blade RF and an RTL SDR here to show off today. Um, but there's support for all sorts of things. There might even be a list here somewhere. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it's got all sorts of stuff that it runs on. Not quite the open radio yet. There's a sound card module for, like a generic um, sound card SDR module for SOAP SDR, but it doesn't work well yet. And it hasn't taken care of the off by one sample bug in those cheap, um, Sound cards. So, well, let's fire it up. It's come up on the other screen, of course. So it brings up this so you can load up whichever device it detects. <coughs> You've also can do networking ones as well. Uh, here we are. It's um, OpenGL based stuff for the uh, waterfall and uh, other bits and bobs. So you can, you can you know, add the modulator. And it does have squelch, which we'll turn on because that hiss is really annoying. <coughs> and you know, it's got the usual demodulators for FM, stereo. Um, got your zoomed in view up here. And this is pretty cool. You've got the uh, audio bass band Trace or FFT, which I found really cool because you can you, know, you can see there's the pilot tone, bass band left plus right, bass band left minus right. And if you get the right channels, you can see over here the um, extra datary stuff that comes on FM radios. Which I forget what it's called. There you go. It is there. <coughs> This one, yeah, 19 kilohertz pilot tones there. And then you got your uh, left minus right and then left plus right audio. And of course, if you put it in FM stereo mode, it just looks like that, which is really boring. But it gives you stereo uh, audio output. The other cool thing about this one is it has a bunch of digital modes built in so you can Try and find the uh, APRS, for example. One, four, five. Uh, one, seven, five, isn't it? Now, it doesn't have a button yet for narrow bandwidth modes, so you've got to shrink it down yourself. Yep. And you can zoom in. Uh, 
and put it in normal FM mode, of course. There you go, there was a packet. Whee. And then you can go, uh, well, it sort of works, as you can see, it spits out binary and there's no squelch and it's a bit weird, but it's getting there. <coughs> but I thought that was a pretty cool feature of a uh, SDR software to do. Uh, and now I can't close it, apparently. There we go, that's better. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And yeah, so yeah, I'll set that to 1200 for, yeah. And there's probably other bits you've got to change as well, but I don't, I don't know what they are. Something funky going on over there too. Is that going to be this radio mic or something maybe? No, it'll be a constant signal, wouldn't it? Anyway, so that's that. So, where's Mark going? What frequency was your thing set up on, Mark? Uh, Ooh, there's something going on there. Yep. There you go. That was the one, because it was huge. That's a LoRa module, I think you were saying. Probably doesn't decode that, but you know, you can write a module for it and it'll, it'll do it. <coughs> this is the plan anyway. So that's kind of all I was going to show. I did tell Kim it was only going to be five or ten minutes, but he put me on for 20 minutes anyway, so questions? Uh, yes, I forget how, but you can. <laughs> right click, maybe. I, th yeah, I think it's right click, but I don't have a right click on this that works. Spate, there you go. Hey, read the, read the manual, how about that? <laughs> what frequency do you want to look at? <laughs> Our broadband was the receiver. Uh, this is an RTO SDR, so it's 1.2 megahertz, depending. I mean, you can change the sample rate. Um, I think it does do three if you've got uh, 3.2 megahertz. So it's it's dependent on your hardware, basically, yeah. and your processing power. So if you don't like with the Blade RF, which I can show you, it. Uh, can do 20, but uh, go much higher than that and my laptop starts to struggle. Well, you can see it's already wider just by default there. That's the same LoRa signal there. And, uh, it's two megahertz. And Whee. Oop, it crashed. <laughs> there you go. Hooray for live demos. So, there it is. Uh, double free. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's right. Select the radio. See if it'll do it again. <laughs> I tried it yesterday and it worked, damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I probably will. Yeah. Yeah, so there we go. That's Cubic SDR, cubicsdr.com. Um, search for it on GitHub. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. What else, Kim? <laughs> it's a US um, RP thing O's from Edis Research. Um, I think there. Can you repeat the question, please? No, the question is does it support the Edis, Edis Research hardware? Not right now, um, but 
it will eventually. Um, Um, when you had the, the view scrolling before you were trying to change the bandwidth, you had periodic blank lines going across the spectrum. Were they some kind of AGC or...? Um, possibly. I can start it up again so we can see that. And it's not doing it for you right now? No, no. <laughs> it was once every 10 seconds or so you'd have a full wideband blackout stripe. Oh, it might have just been me changing when you change frequencies and things, it sometimes does that. Another question back there. Oh, there you go. So the existing digital modes that are there, are there anything else that's actually doing real-time decoding? It's like you mentioned APRS. Does Cubic SDR actually show you the packets? Uh, it just shows you that binary stream at the just moment. Just the binary stream. Um, there is work on uh, doing ASCII decoding or vericode or whatever um, for the various modes, but it's not quite there yet. Um, it is, you know, as I say, it's in active development. Like there's, there's people working on it and it, there's commits every day just about. There was another question over there somewhere. Uh, that's really cool. Um, I'm interested in, and uh, I don't, you may not know the answer to this question, but how much of the interface is using the OpenGL requirement? Uh, I believe it's all the moving bits. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. So yeah, the, the waterfall, the spectrum bits, all that I think is, is OpenGL. Okay, thank you. That's awesome. Is there any documentation for the algorithms used for demodulation? Uh, not much. Okay. Um, again, it's coming. Um, I'm not directly involved in it. I have submitted some um, bug reports, but I don't develop it myself. So I haven't looked for the documentation. What is written, though, the code is pretty good. It's pretty clean. So you could probably read it and figure out what to do. You know, one project that I have on the back burner is to get free DV in that uh, list of things so we can do, do free DV, Zmod directly in. But that's, I'm not a programmer, so I've got to figure out how the hell you do that. <laughs> Something to do with APIs and libraries, I'm sure. Next one. Uh, yes, um, the question is can you feed the AF output into other things? Uh, yes, there's I think a UDP port you connect to, um, but I haven't looked at that and done it yet. But yes, it's possible. What's the audio latency from the transmission to actually getting the audio coming out? Uh, it's depending on the hardware again, but with the Blade RF it's 200 milliseconds, so you know, a reasonable amount. With the um, RTL-SDR it's a bit more, and I guess as you go up in, you know, as you approach the capabilities of your hardware, your computing hardware, it'll get longer as it buffers and loses packets and all that. So I guess there's a lot of optimization that could be done to reduce that. Anyone else? All right, back to Kim. All right, if you'd like to put your hands together, thanks. Thank you.